Laura Hayfley has also been on the scene. She was out here as well with me at the police department gathering a lot of this information. So I want to talk to Laura now, who's near 10th and K, where all of this happened. Laura? You can see still an extremely active scene behind me. We're just several steps away from the state capitol. Now, of course, moving on into the coming days, the priority for the Sacramento Police Department is going to be to track down suspects. Now, I just got it confirmed by two sources that this crime occurred in some kind of drive-by shooting format. And we don't know if the suspects remained in a moving vehicle while they fired their firearms or if they jumped out of a vehicle before firing their weapons. We're going to get that cleared up for you. But again, this crime occurring in a drive-by shooting format, which of course allowed suspects to get away from the scene extremely quickly. Though Sacramento Police Department investigators very confident during uh, today's earlier press conference about catching these suspects. And that's for a number of reasons. The first is cameras. There's several cameras in the area that had a view of uh, this morning's scene. Investigators will be taking very specific look at that video to try to identify the people involved in this shooting. The second reason why investigators are confident they'll be able to track down suspects is because of how many witnesses were there this morning. They're going to take their time to interview anybody who may have seen anything. And even more specifically, we'll show you this now, they've set up a QR code to allow people to submit videos and pictures, anything that they think might help investigate track down the people involved. Now, I want to talk about those cameras for a second. In 2016, the Sacramento Police Department planted 10 cameras in this area to keep an eye on crime, to help police track down um, any suspects that may have committed a crime. So obviously, they're hoping that those cameras come into play with this investigation as well. There's no question of There is no question about it that those are vital indeed. All Marley, right, Laura, over to you. Thank you for that live report over there near 10th and K with a much more pointed look at the investigation and now the search for multiple suspects. You heard from the chief saying that really all of this violence, this is now strengthening their commitment to crack down on violence and gun violence. The mayor out here also calling gun violence a, a sickness throughout our country and something that we need to take a bigger stand on and put a stop so that we are never dealing with this at this time again. Back to you, Tony and Adrian. Yeah, such a devastating day. Uh, Marley, I know that they are going to plan to honor some of the victims and call for an end to gun violence. Uh, do you know of a, an event going on tonight at Cesar Chavez Park? Can you fill us in on that? Now, I do know that the community right now is working on that. I know several community activists have been in touch with some of the victims and their family members. But, you know, at this point, a lot of the family members are staying quiet, laying low as they just wait to hear more from police and investigators as to what to do. But we are working to get some more information because we do know that the community wants to come together. Some have even already set up um, fundraising to help some of the victims. So we will work to get some more information on the gathering tonight at Cesar Chavez Park. And Adrian, 